so we can at least look what was that You know, the wonderful thing about using face rig is that I get to wear a t-shirt and nobody knows. I have a question about the exam. Is that the exam? Yeah. So on Canvas, it's, well, no, on the website that we like took the website on, it says that it's like waiting to be graded, but on Canvas, it like didn't grade and it just like went into my grade. And it says zero, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, we haven't we haven't graded it yet, so oh, okay. once you once it's graded, it should be good. Man, my glasses really mess up the whole eye thing. Yeah, I was like, I'm pretty sure I didn't get a zero, but do I really know how well I did? <laughs> yeah. I mean, all things are possible. I'll the same thing. <laughs> One of those semesters. It was going to be a pass or fail situation after that. I got the zero. So, again. Oh, thanks. What was that? I said I was going to take it as pass or fail if I would have got the zero, professor. You know, at that yeah, point, yeah, that yeah, means yeah. I ain't learning enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, um, just to reiterate, in case, in case people hadn't heard, uh, in case... You hadn't heard yet. Uh, I will do a third exam, but it will. But your exam is gonna. But your exam grade is essentially gonna be your highest two, and that's in addition to the final. So you know. So we'll do a third exam on, and it will be covering a lot of things that go over what we're doing, and that will be like close to the end of the semester. Then the final will be cumulative. The third exam is going to focus on what we're going to cover today, which is regular expressions. Which is possibly the most useful thing you're going to learn in this class. Possibly the uh, this entire semester. So let's go ahead. And I'm already recording on OBS, so let's go ahead and uh, take us way back to the to the less crazy times of 2015 the um now you may have heard me say this tell you this story before if you've if you've encountered me last semester but the um but back then the you know 2015 Republican presidential campaign was in full swing now you may be wondering why I'm bringing up the 2015 the, the 2016 rep, uh, presidential campaign um, but that actually has a lot to do with um, our with our story. The le the presumed leader of uh, and winner of that election at that point was uh, Jeb Bush, and you know, in an effort to basically show how transparent he was, actually Jeb Bush had a very interesting reputation as uh, adopting yes, Jeb. Je uh, let me go ahead and mute all for a second. And note, again, your exams have not been graded, so. 
So let me go ahead over over here, share screen, right? So, um, Jeb Bush, for those of you who do not know, he was the governor of Florida. He is the second son of H.W. Bush and the younger brother of the more recent uh, George Bush. Yes. You're still allowed to do the extra credit. Okay. So, the, um, anyway, he started running June 2015 and it did not do so hot. All right. Um, where is mute participants? Mute all. Um, the extra credit, you don't need to demo the extra credit. Just post your submission on the, on the discussion board. Okay. And then I will basically, in, a, in like by the end of the week, I'll probably go and check that out. Okay. So anyway, one of the things he did as governor of Florida is that he basically, um, he adopted email very readily. Um, let's see, let's, that's getting ahead of ourselves, but basically he, he had a reputation of the E governor. Um, this has to do with, uh, and basically he adopted email very early. Um, a side note. Yeah. So in 2015, Bush released several thousand emails as his time as governor online. Most of the emails were public record under Florida sunshine laws, right? So let's go ahead and talk about Florida man for a second, right? Florida man, for those of you who do not know, because maybe you're not from the United States, but Florida has a reputation. That's where the crazy people live. Like, um, let's see, Florida man. Let's see. News. Florida man. Yeah, it's all just not great stuff for Florida man. Florida man hangs giant roll of toilet paper in front yard to poke fun at coronavirus panic buying. Let's see. So the entire thing about Florida man, though, um, and the reason that like Florida man is a meme is because Florida has very rigorous uh, sunshine laws. Basically that it's very easy to get public records in Florida. So it's very easy for newspapers to get the, to get nice, big, deep, nice, you know, fine details about stories that you might not get in other, in other States. So all the crazy stuff gets to make it into the newspaper in Florida because it's very easy to get that information. So that's probably the reason why Florida man is a thing. So one of the things that happened when Jeb Bush was running was that he released uh, some emails that included the personal details, such as social security numbers, names, addresses, as well as the contents of the messages. They, um, let's see, let's see, it's Jeb Bush e emails. Let's go ahead and look for, yeah, from The Verge. Okay. Yeah, because they've got it. So many, uh, but basically that he wanted, he wanted to, yeah. In the spirit of transparency, I am posting the e emails of my government sh uh, governorship here. A note on the Bush's website to state. Some are funny, some are serious, some are, I wrote in frustration. Now I should point out, I'm not like going to, the, the reason I'm like bringing up about Jeb Bush had any other candidate anyone done this during the election, I'd be talking about them instead. But because Bush did it, Jeb Bush did it, he did this. Like, um, here's an email that The Verge redacted. Dear Jeb, Governor Jeb Bush, RE, social security number, there's the social security number in the email. This letter is to inform you of the facts regarding blank in, blank's employment with the House of Hope Orlando. Blank is a vital part of our boys program. The moral character and integrity of this man is not in question as we have dealt with uh, blank. The following facts are documented. And then all the stuff here. Uh, this was for an employment issue. Another issue sent on behalf of healthcare representatives, as shown below, contains information about a child with life safe with life threatening medical condition, basically asking, "Hey, can the governor's office please cut through uh, this red tape?" You know, with regards to this stuff. And believe it or not, that's actually something like one of the jobs that 
you know, one of the things you can literally ask representatives or senators or gov or governors to help you do cut through red tape. Um, let's take, for example, the situation where you might end up alive, but legally dead somehow. This is typically an issue where just like some kind of bureaucratic issue where you're accidentally marked dead. I deeply identify. I think we all deeply identify with that statement right now. Um, but the if you're accidentally marked dead, this this has issues such as well, it's very tip hard to collect social security. It's very hard to get a job if you're dead because you can't legally be hire legally hire a dead person. You know, uh, you can't vote if you're dead. In fact, I mean, okay, and. And the fact that you don't have to pay taxes doesn't really seem to be worth it, to be honest. Because you don't get a job, you can't buy property, you can't rent. Uh, no, although I would recommend watching a, a video at DEF CON, which kind of shows how easy, uh, the how kind of hackable the system for, um, for declaring deaths is. So the... Um, so, but one the one of the few one basically the most direct way to get that resolved is to basically ask your representative or governor or somebody to basically uh, to to basically call up the social security office and throttle them until they get until they acknowledge that you're actually alive. All right. So, mute all. Okay. So. Um, now, what ha so as a result, so, but anyway, getting back to this, uh, the final is going to be worth more. So, it, you can check out the details in the syllabus. Um, so, anyway, we ha but, I mean, we're going to see, we'll see how that works out, depending on, like, the circumstances of the whole coronavirus thing and the, and the other section... Oh, like, there's one other section that I don't teach, so I'll have to check that out. Um, anyway, but as you can see, a lot of personal identif uh, identifying information got released here. The big thing, of course, is social security numbers, right? Um, social security numbers are pretty important in the United States because even though they're not supposed to be used as an identification number, they're totally used as, an, as a completely insecure identification number. Number. It's very frustrating, to be honest, if you're a, um, you know, it's very frustrating if you happen to be a, you know, if you're, hap you know, because it's really insecure, it's very, it makes identity theft very easy, and it's just one of my pet peeves, but it also has to do with the fact that there's a very strong resistance against a national uh, ID system. So, anyway, uh... The question is, how can you easily... So say you're working for a politician and they are going to release a bunch of emails. How do you repeat from making the... Uh, uh, avoid making this mistake? How do you parse through millions of emails to make sure that you aren't accidentally releasing somebody's social security number? And this is where something called regular expressions come in. Because if you know regular expressions, these become this becomes really easy so i'm going to go to a website called regexer and to and to be very clear this is going to be a question on exam three and probably on the final as well if i can get away with it which is given a file please strip out all the please identify all the social security numbers and strip them out but the first thing we have to do is find the social security numbers so this is where regexes come in. Now, here's the brilliant things about regexes, about regular expressions. Regular expressions are this kind of metal language. They're a secondary language uh, that's shared between tons of languages. So if you know how to write regular expressions in Java, you know how to write them in Perl, you know how to write them in Python, you know how to write them in C, you know how to write them in every single language that uses them. So regular expressions are essentially like a super-powered find-replace function. So let's go ahead and write... So let's say I'm searching for just the word... Uh, 
I'm working. I'm looking for two S's in a row. Here, boom! It finds two all the all the in, all the two S's in a row. That's the regular expression SS. Really doesn't match uh, me much. You're just saying, hey, I'd like an S followed by another S. But say you want to find something a bit more complicated, like a social security number. Like, I can look for one social security number pretty easily, right? Let's say I look for one. I look for 111-22-3333, and if that's your social security number, I'm sorry that I just doxed you, uh, but, um, but you know, look, how do you look for all possible social security numbers, right? What if it was... I need to find all possible social security numbers, right? So how can I do that? Well, if you know regular expressions, you can create a very, you can create a very quick statement to say, a very quick pattern it's called. Slash D slash D slash D dash, slash D slash D dash, slash D slash D slash D slash D. And that will find and it matches anything that's a regular that say that's a social that's in the format of a social security number. What does this mean? Well, slash d means any digit followed by any digit followed by any digit followed by a dash followed by any digit followed by any digit followed by a dash followed by four any digits. So that is a very easy statement you can use in programming to find a social security number. So let's go ahead and first write, um, let's go ahead and like start making our, ourselves a, um, a file of social security numbers to go through, right? So, or let's go ahead and actually make a string, a, let's just, nah, we don't need to do that. Let's just go and say regex example one dot py. So let's go ahead and talk about regular expressions, right? Text is equal to hello, Mr. Ha uh, hacker man, my social security number is one, two, three dash four five dash six seven eight nine. So social security number the dash dash G meant global, but it's it's not necessarily something you're gonna need for the Python it's just the orange bits over here for Python that we need. It means basically search for it everywhere. Please take care of it. Now, I'm going to warn you, I know more about regular expressions than I do about using regular expressions in Python because I use them all. I use regular expressions a lot. The regular expression engine in Python is called RE. And what we do is that we create a pattern object, I believe. Let's see. RE.compile and basically we say what kind of pattern we want to look for. So I want to look for the pattern that we just talked about, which is, uh, and I'll teach you all the, the syntax for this, but I'm just showing you kind of how this works in Python so you can test it out. Pattern is equal to that. So the way this works is that you compile a pattern something you want to look for. It's fine. Okay, and we just compiled it and it works. Now let's go ahead and print pattern and see what we get. It says, hey, we got a re compile and slash slash d slash slash d slash slash as opposed to one slash. This is one of those weird things about um, about Python, although it looks like it managed to just ignore that issue entirely, which is great. 
So let's go ahead and continue. And then let's see, I think it's pattern dot, let's see, pattern dot match, I believe. Let's see if that works before I have to look it up. None. Find. Let's see. Let's go ahead and look up how to use Python RE. Python RE. Okay. All, it has all the rules for how to use these, but we're gonna go, but I'll go over that in a bit. So let's see, we have, ah, match. Zero or more characters at the beginning, return a match. Return, not, is this, this is different from a zero length match. Ah, search. Pattern dot search. See if this works. So yes. And notice that what it returned, it said, I'm returning a pattern match object. It spans from the indices 50 to 61. And here's what we matched. One, two, three, four, five, uh, one, two, three, dash, four, five, dash, six, seven, eight, nine. So, um, so search, what it does is that given a pat now, What's saying over here is that you can just simply use re.search and then give it a pattern and a string. So we can we could skip the whole compiling step and just simply do and we could get the same effect by doing this. Print pattern dot print no re dot search text sorry search using this pattern, this text. Sorry, for, search for this pattern in this text. And notice we'll get the same, we should get the same output. Yep. It's just two different ways of doing the same thing. Um, so, let's see. See so are more characters at the beginning of the string, so that looks at the beginning. Um, find all finds all. But once we've got a pat, once we've got a match, we rep we we get a match object. They always are true since match and search return none when there's no match. You can test whether there's whether some there was a match with a simple if statement, which is that hey, if you've had a match, handle the match. Otherwise, don't do it. Um. Oh, your show, TV show paused? My son's TV show paused. An utter tragedy. I need to return. Oh, yeah. If you could get it, that would be great. Yep. So, but we can see here that when we matched, we found this. We found that. Okay. So, um, let's see. So, there's all sorts of things. Uh, match the string patch to match. I'm trying to figure, remember how I, it actually found it. So, oh yeah, you can grab it. So, let's go ahead and grab this. Match is equal to. Actually, I will just simply comment these out for future reference for you guys. Match. So let's go ahead and store our match in a variable and see what we can do with it. Match dot, well, one thing we can do is this. Well, that doesn't do anything. We can access it like a list and index zero gives you the first the first part of it. There, it has to do with something called grouping, which is kind of uh, annoying, but let's go ahead and just Ignore that for right now. Let's see. Um, we can do match.groups.
which says, hey, there was no gr there were no groups in there. Um, let's see. Expand. Return the string obtained during backslash substitution. So let's go ahead and see what expand does. Nope, it needs a template to expand it. So whatever that is. If there was a single group, and then group is the other thing. So group returns basically the entire thing. What, over here? Yeah. That is Minecraft. My friend invited me to play in the server yesterday, so. All right. Let's go ahead and So, but this is the way basically the pat this pattern looks like. We compile a pattern that we want to look for, and then we uh, no, uh, sorry. Then pattern search text. You create the pattern, and then you use the pattern to search for the te the text for a, ma uh, a match, and then you can use the match to get uh, to get stuff. So, what kind of things? Can, so how? What what does the language of of um of regular expressions look like so let's go ahead and i'll pull up regexer again because it's easier to show you this language which is my goal for the day yes find all um there's other ways to do that once i sh so olivia asked if there was a way to get the same all the same pattern and yes we're gonna get into that in a bit for right now i want to focus on on the language itself before we start messing around with it with the in um, more in Python. So let's go ahead and talk about. So if you search for any kind of letters, such as say, hello world, string, if you basically just enter a bunch of letters, it will act like you would expect it to. like. Hello will match capital H E L L O. That will match lowercase hello. So if you just use letters, it will um it will act exactly as you think it should. Okay. Um the what happens is that you've got special is that with uh this is that we've got special commands like character classes. So one thing that we saw was a character class of slash D, which matches any digit. So here, this matches a single digit. Here it matches two, two, and nine and seven. Notice that it note the it may be a bit hard to see in the video lecture that it has a split a slight it has a slight space between the nine and the seven, but it matches nine and it matches seven. It doesn't match ninety seven. If I give it if I say D D, it's gonna match a two digit number. So it's literally saying look for a digit followed by another digit. So it won't match two or the other two, but it will match 97. Now, um, there's other classes of characters such as um, alphanumeric characters or slash W for word characters. So over here, note that we've got basically it's matching every single kind of uh, letter over here. It also matches numbers so alphanumeric aw matches anything that you would involve that basically it matches anything that's not white space that you'd expect to be in text speaking about white space you got slash s for white space so we've got three types of characters here we've got slash d for numbers slash w to match letters and slash 
S to match white space. There's also a couple of other things you can do, such as um, you can invert those choices. So here, slash S looks for white space. Slash capital S says anything that is not white space. Slash D gets single digit numbers. Slash D means a number. If you want multiple, you have to put down multiple. And I'll show you how to do repetition uh, in a bit because this thing does allow you to do repetition. So slash D for numbers. Uh, slash W for alphanumeric for word characters. And then slash S for white space. If you capitalize it, you invert it. So here, all the word characters, everything that's not a word character, so your spaces and your punctuations, your digits, and everything that's not a digit, which can be useful sometimes. Um, but some, but here's the thing. Sometimes that's not enough, you know, that's not useful enough. Uh, sometimes we really want to, um, we want to basically look for other things like, um, you know, well, let, well, let's take a look at the most recent assignment I'm going to give you, uh, my regular expression assignment. The one that goes and looks for all the vowel that looks for vowels and v two vowels in a row. How do you specify, you know, is there a slash V for vowels that matches a vertical tab? Apparently How about this matches the V character. Okay, that's kind of less than useless. So what we can, what's the really cool part about this? What about flash P? Does that give you punctuation? No. No, what you can do though, is that you can set, is that you can use the brackets. And this is really cool. Watch what this does. A-E-I-O-U. So this, so brackets allow you to make your own character classes, your own character sets. It matches any of the following, an A, or an or an E, or an I, or a U. Yeah, A, E, I, O, or U. And if I want to do caps as well, A, E, I, O, U. And there, notice that it matches all the A, E, I, all the vowels. Which is pretty cool. So, um... So, you know, if you forget how to do slash D, you can always do, which is effectively what slash D is. Now, um, one of the things I did was that basically I wrote slash D for social security number. I wrote this pattern, right? But writing that out like that is kind of obnoxious, right? Like having to do super, a lot of slash Ds. What we can use is that we can use curly braces to denote repetition. So this says, find a digit, specifically find three of them in a row, followed by a dash, followed by a digit, followed by two of them. So two, find two digits, followed by a dash, then find four digits. So this says, find exactly three of the thing before me, find exactly two of the thing before me, find exactly four of the thing before me. Any questions so far? So, um, this is fairly, uh, for curly braces? No. So those are special characters called meta characters and meta characters. If so meta characters, like, um, as we'll see period, if you want to look for a literal period, you'll have to, es you'll have to escape them. If we wanted to look for curly braces, we'd have to escape the curly braces. We'd have to.
If I wanted to look for a little... Wait, wait. Yep, this syntax will be usable in Python. Although, you'll want to put a... Although, I didn't do this, you'll want to put an R before your string characters. Uh, when, when you're creating a regular expression. To create a, what's called, a raw string. Again, we'll go into that later. But yes, this syntax is, can be used in Python. I mean, a pattern is just a string. So, we're just creating a specially formatted string. Um, let's see. So, let's go ahead and let's, let me look at regex use cases. Well, let's look at some regex use cases. Validating inputs, cleaning inputs, looking for substrings, practical examples. Let's see. Matching a password is a good one. Matching a URL, matching an HTML tag, matching duplicated words. I'm looking for looking for a good example in real life. Email validation. Don't. That's not. It's evil. Val, date validations. Hey, finding a valid date. Right. Form checking to see if it's a valid date. Well, that checks if it's year year month month year year format. It's, I think you mean day. There. Um, oh yeah, that's a good one. Checking to see if a credit card is is valid. Is valid. Um, and note that there's a lot of stuff over here that we'll have to get into. So this checks to see if a credit card number is valid for Visa. Notice that it does uh, two different th things over here. So it does brack. So it does four. Then bracket zero through nine. 0, 9, and then 12. How interesting. So let's go ahead and go into detail about this. So caret and dollar sign have very specific uses over here, uh, which are really cool. Caret means the beginning of a string. So basically, say you don't want to just look, say you're going through a string and you don't want to just look in the middle of a string. You want to know if it begins so say we want to look basically for the word. So first, let me go ahead and type my case insensitive flag to make it over here. That's something you will be able to do in Python, by the way. Let's say I want to look for the word the, but I don't just want to look for the word the. the. I want to look to see if the line, if we have a line that begins with the. Let's also say multi-line. We're going to treat each line as a different string. So I can say caret the, and this will literally mean the string begins with the. Multi-line, take it off. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. Caret over here means we are going to begin the. This is the beginning of the string. Followed by the. Dollar sign is the opposite. Can you handle that, Annie? Uh, my lunch. You'll have to yell at the speaker. Um, this means the end of the line. So, um, here we're gonna say I want to find any anything that any line that any string that ends with a per period. Notice that I escaped the period. So let's go back to the example of credit card, right? This is extremely useful, basically making sure also like credit card numbers don't accidentally get submitted or to censor them out, right? So um, credit card numbers, right? So I mentioned, by the way, that a social security number is dumb. Um, part of the reason it's dumb is because it's just a number tied to a geographical location for the most part. It doesn't actually have any rules again, uh, and nor does it self-validate. On the other hand, um, Visa cards do have a self-validation. Uh, do have a bit of self-validating in here. So first, let's look at this notation. It says, "Hey, beginning of the string, 
It starts with a four. Now capture group. It says zero dash nine. That doesn't mean a zero or a dash or a nine. When we do capture groups, we can say something like this, A through Z. And that will match all letters from A to Z, which is pretty cool. Similarly, in a capture group, I could go A to E for just all the first letter, for the first five letters, A to Y to exclude Z, which is pretty cool. Um, same thing from A to Z to get all letters. So zero to nine means, hey, find something that starts with four and then a zero or nine. So four, three, okay? Let's go ahead and now see. And then the next part of that was 12 in colons. This means that basically we had a four, okay? Followed by any 12 digits we want. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just fill it up with ones. So 12. So there we go. A four followed by 12 digits. And we can put the carrot in front of there as well. Next is this little group over here, which says, I don't, I don't really mess with these too much. But let's see what it says. It says groups with multiple tokens while creating a capture group. Character set matches any three characters in the set. Match three. Match zero to one of the preceding thing. This is saying that basically that I'm confused. I thought all credit card numbers were 16 digits. Why would it say zero one of them? Let's see. Oh, American Express. Really? I thought they all had 16 digits. They just simply formatted them differently. Okay. Ignore. I'm going to go ahead and say hey so this is just special syntax we'll get into later over here these two characters this on the other hand this just simply this is an interesting thing we'll also get into later but it says this can this is part is complete the stuff in the parentheses is completely optional so it says hey so this is valid but so is let's see zero to nine 12. I didn't know that. Well, color me impressed. So it matches this. Let's go ahead. I'll remove this. But this would match a 16 digit one over here. Because that gets into stuff I don't want to uh, talk about quite yet over here. Let's go ahead and look at the American Express one, right? We've got a carrot over here. So we've got a three. So for all American Express cards, they start with a three. And then they start with a four. Or, and then they the three either has a four or a seven after it. And then there's 13 digits after that. Okay. MasterCard's fairly complicated as as well as the other ones. But that's an I mean, but that's a fairly useful thing to know that you can basically create something. Um let's go ahead and talk about email addresses for a second. So email so I'm going to I'm not going to so email address rules are actually kind of a nightmare. So uh here Note emailregex.com. It works for 99.99% .99 of all possible emails. And as you can see, it's kind of a nightmare. I don't know what this says. It's a nightmare. Somebody, he auto-generated a, a, a thing, uh, this thing. 
so that you can watch it. But notice that it allows you to do, um, let's see. Let's go ahead and find something that's familiar. Aha, there. This is all the stuff before the at that's possible. And now all the stuff that's after the at that's possible. Um, email addresses, though, typically are of the format, right? They are some, there's some username at domain dot suffix, right? That's the way it typically looks. So that actually gets us into, so let's just, uh, our, our, um, so let's simplify this. Let's go ahead and just look for a Gmail, uh, write something that, that matches Gmail addresses, okay? Or actually, let's do temple because Gmail is actually awful. Temple.edu. So let's write something that basically would parse a file for ed for uh, addresses. So, um, so let's go ahead and work on the latter part of this first. So we know that a temple that an email address will have an ad in it, and it will have temple, and then. As soon as you hit the dot, it comes up in a different color. That's because a dot in regular expressions is what we call a wild card. It matches literally anything. Basically, you can say you can put anything there. If you want an actual dot, an actual period, you'll have to escape it. Uh, edu. So this will match at temple.edu. Now let's think about... Uh, so let's talk about just, let's limit it to our TU emails. So what is it? It would be, so let's see mine, TUG. I don't actually know. I don't, I rarely use it. I'm kind of confused as for the purpose of regex. It's basically a faster search tool. It's a more powerful search tool. Um, some, so somebody, okay. So that's an excellent question. So let me go ahead and actually pull up one of my favorite textbooks for a second. So the question I got is, I guess I'm kind of confused to this purpose of regex. How is it basically a faster search tool, which I said that it's actually a more powerful search tool. So automate the boring stuff.com. Great Python textbook also available for three entire textbook over here. And let's just go ahead and check, right? Here's how you wanted to, here's, say you wanted to find an American phone number using a string, right? Without using a, any regular expressions, this is how you might check to see if something's a phone, phone number. First, you'd check to make sure it has the appropriate length of characters. Then you'd check, hey, are these first three characters uh, decimals? And then you want to check, hey, is the index at three a dash, right? And then you'd have to basically manually check every single character. It's tedious. It's a pain in the butt if you want to check, write a program that checks every single possible one of those. But if you use regular expressions. Oh, and then also, if you want to find it in a larger string, you'd have to get more code, right? Call me at this number tomorrow. This is my office. For I and range, range length of message, you check this, this slice to see is it a phone number. And so basically you'd check, call me at four, all me at 41, me at 40, 415, me at 415. And so it just does not do, and so it's just not very efficient at checking. So finding patterns of text using regular expressions are great because also you can modify it to, to take into account like stuff like this. What if you've got periods? or they use the parentheses, space, and then the n number. So the code is much smaller, much more efficient, and it handles a lot more cases. So let's go ahead and I'll continue talking about the syntax. So over here, right, we've got temple, at temple.edu. So if I wanted to match any 
thing that had a that was a temple address, I could go, hey, let's see. So here's a cool one. Slash W plus. And this says, so remember, this was over here like three characters, four characters, five characters. Well, if I put in a plus instead, that means at least one. So at least one alphanumeric character at temple.edu. So that will match, you know, a lot of things. It won't match my username, andrew.rosen at temple.edu because it doesn't catch the dot. But it's close for right now. If I wanted to match the dot, I might have to make my own character class. So let's go A through Z and then a dot. When it's inside a character when it's inside a character set like this, you don't have to escape it. So that matches one of these. So it matches the n at temple.edu and then plus. So let's see this. A to Z or the n character, at least one of them. At temple.edu. And there you go. about numbers zero through nine in there as well tug eight five there we go when i when i do do it in python do you have to write this if i want yeah i have to do the slash period to do that i'll show more about how to do it in python in a minute at the beginning, no, no, no. That's why it's grayed out. Um, it really that depends on the language. Um, all right. So there's a whole so. Yep, this gets the dot before the edu. So it gets the so here it says hey. Grab any one of the characters in here, specifically at least one of these characters. So it will match a a a at temple.edu a a a a a a a a one a a a any combination at temple, and then followed by an at followed by temple slash slash period gives us a literal period character dot edu. Because if I have a period, so here's, because period means it will match anything. Let's take a look at period. Will it find letters mixed into numbers? Sure. Right? At least one of these guys. Basically, it says one of these things plus. So one or more of them. Basically, find any combination of these guys. The dot means anything. So, I'm going to... So, that's why I escaped it. We'll get into the dot in a bit. I think for the remaining time, I'm going to follow the uh, textbook, which I probably should have been doing from the beginning, which is... Let's go ahead. And so, let's go ahead over here and check out... So... Let's go back and talk about Python for a second. So we've got, um, so you import RE, you compile your regu regular expression, you create your, and the way you use it is you say, hey, search for it. And then you use dot group to get the first thing you find. I use mo for match object. It seems complicated at first, but as he points out, it is much easier to do and much shorter. Um, basically, but the way we use regular expressions, import RE, create a regular expression object, uh, 
use the uh, find use the search method on the string you want to search for. This gives you a match object, and then use the group method to get the stuff back. Um, pythex.org. A Python regular expression tester. That seems nice. Regular expression cheat sheet. So notice over here, um, here's all the kind of rules that we've got that I've been going through. So notice that we've had, here's some of the stuff. Slash D, digit, non-digit, space, white space, non-white space, alphanumeric, non-alphanumeric, and then there's other stuff over here. There's special sequences over here, like look ahead. What does the group function do? I'll get into that in just a second. I wanted to make sure that we got basically a handle on the syntax and kind of the and kind of the methodology. But let's get into the group since. Okay, so let's t go talk about like um, let's go ahead and talk about uh, this. You can reach me. Hmm. This is getting a bit long. Let's turn it into a multi-line string. Yeah, I'm hitting you with all new stuff today. You can reach me at... Hmm. One, two, three. Now if I print this out, so what a what three quotes do? You may have seen me use it for comments before, but what it really does is that it creates a string. Um, and it basically lets and it basically says, hey, I'll take in anything and I'll just reproduce it as you send it to me. Don't have to worry about escape characters, don't have to worry about end of line characters. It's kind of useful. Notice that basically it produced it exactly as I had it up there. Alright. So, hello, Mr. Hackerman. My social security number is this. Please take care of it. You can reach me at my phone number. So, let's create a regular expression for that phone number. Right? We had a parentheses, which is a special character. A closed parentheses, which is another special character. And we had three numbers in there. Three numbers and one thing to do is you want to put an R in front of this over here because this will let us uh, do this make sure that it's escaped and, and good I'm uh, sorry this me me basically means that uh, it'll let it'll let Python know that that we're get basically working with regular expressions it handles raw strings is what it's called and Python kind of turns into a mess like if otherwise. So open parentheses, three digits, close parentheses. So now we what we do is that we search for that match, print match.group, and notice it finds it. Okay. So, um, now what we can do is that, uh, we can break this up. So let's go ahead and switch this into something a bit easier to read. Just this format instead. I'm going to use his example over here and put parentheses around the first part. And the second part. It's highly advisable. 
for regular expressions to do this. Because what it's going to do is that it's going to give us a raw string. Um, here, let me print out. Let me show you what I mean. Print slash n, meaning it identifies it as slash n as opposed to a new line character. In other words, it says this is literally what you want want me to display as a put. Um, and we want to feed these characters to, we want to feed these characters to Python. Sorry, to the regular expression engine, not to the string. Not, and we don't want like the string to do something funky, like put in a new line where we don't mean to have a new line or something like that. So, just remember, R for regular expressions. Pattern RE compile, so we create this one. And now we run it again. We do, Let's do group. And now watch what we can do. Match dot group one. Zero. And one. So print match dot group. We got this. Group zero gives me the whole thing. And if I ask for group one, it gives me just one, two, three. Let's go ahead and break this up a bit. I know this is confusing, but uh, I have issues with understanding groups sometimes myself. It takes a bit for me to understand it, but it's actually kind of a cool thing we can do. Sorry. Group. So when we use parentheses like this, this is what groups are. Basically, it splits it up into uh, uh, the regular expression into multiple groups. Notice that these parentheses are unescaped, meaning they're, and notice that actually they're highlighted like a different brown color, more of a reddish color over here. This means that it's identifying them as a, as basically um, as special things for our regular expression. So here, printing out the group and printing out group zero gives us the same thing, which is the entire match. The group one gives us the first group uh, that was captured in parentheses. Group two gives us the second group that was in parentheses. If I were to do it like this, now we'd have three groups. Group one gives us the first group. Group two gives us the second group. And groups gives us all the groups that get captured. So... Um, which gets pretty useful because then you can, you know, split it up fairly easily. Um, now notice that they've got, that they got, that we, so here's, this is what's talking about the uh, slashes over here. Here are the list of all the regular, uh, of all those characters that have special meaning in um, regular expressions. The ones that you would have to escape if you want to use them. You've got period, you've got caret, Dollar sign, so wild card, beginning, end, clean star, plus, so clean star we'll get into, but plus means one or more of, clean star means zero or more of, so it can have it or it can have infinitely many of it. These three basically are a family together, which is... So zero, uh, zero, 0 to infinite, 1 to infinite, 0 or 1. We learned about this. This was quantify. In other words, we can say we want exactly this many. This is to create a character set. This is to escape stuff. This is to create a group. The or and this bar, this bar which is right above your enter key, 
that gives you that we use that for or. So if you want to use any of those, you have to back you have to escape them. Now, here's what's really cool that the bar character or the pipe. You can use it if you want to match one of, if you've got like multiple things. So here he's got the example Batman or Tina Fey. So here you can, if you compile Batman or Tina Fey and search for Batman and Tina Fey, it will look for it. It's going to, and if you, and find something and the first thing it finds is Batman. So it returns Batman. If you search Tina Fey and Batman, the first thing it finds is Tina Fey right? They looked, wait, does, does this match this regex or this regex? I'll, uh, and you'll put it out. So, um, here's another fun one, which I'll simply show, which I think is easier to kind of demonstrate over here. So here we've got um, bat. So let's create. A, so this is called. So we're compiling a regular expression, and it's bat followed either by man, mobile, copter, or bat. So this will match. Um, let's see text and darkness. I am the night. I am dramatic pause. Batman. Okay, and bat reg x dot um, match. That dot match. That search. Let's search for this text for something that matches that. Print mo dot group. So that will match Batman. And that will match also Batcar. It will match Batman, Batmobile, Batcopter, and Batbat. Any one of those. That's what the or means. It means man or mobile or copter or bat. So... Remember, group zero, group or group zero gets the entire thing that was captured. Batcopter. Asking for one, ask for the first group that was captured. And here it says copter, right? Notice the parentheses over here. That's in a group. So, um, so here's another one I think is good. So let's go ahead. You can also use this, your groups like this. So that will match Batman. And now what did I say the question mark was? Any, any takers? Optional stuff. Zero or one of. Yep. Zero or, one. zero or one of the preceding thing. So it will match Batman or it will bat match Batwoman. Or Batwoman, rather. So, specifically, specific, so it's saying this wo part is optional for matching it. Okay. Um, 
So in the earlier phone example, what he's pointing out, by the way, is that you can totally, if you've got an area code, right? If you put a question mark in front of this first group or in front of this group, sorry, behind this group, not in front of, then it will be, um, then it will match it whether or not it has the area code or not. Okay. Who is the best Batman? Um, I'd have to say the animated series. Um, the, the, the voice actor is not coming to my name. Right? Uh, the, uh, the voice, yeah, Kevin Conroy. <laughs> Kevin Conroy's voice makes Batman. Um, I think Christian Bale did a very interesting Batman. I think Bat Ben Affleck also did a very interesting Batman. Um, but, you know, Adam West, that is a very different Batman. <laughs> uh, if you want some, some, uh, <laughs> bat suit nipples. Um, anyway, Batman and Robin, Riff Tracks. Something to watch. Um, so, let's go ahead and see what happens when we put in the um, Clean Star over here. So, Clean Star matches 0, or 1, or 2, or 3, or 4. So that matches Batman. It will also match Batwoman. It will also match Bat Woo Man and Bat Uh Wo 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 Man. Um, what it won't do is it won't match this. And the reason it won't match this is that because it considers this thing to be a whole group, a whole thing by itself. Right? It considers woe to be basically a single indivisible group. So it's fa so it's as many uh, WOs as you want. So um So yeah, it will match, ba and it will match basically as much as it can. Um, so, as we mentioned, with, and we mentioned, so this is zero or one of, this is plus, so that's one or more of. So here, Batman won't work. And here I'm getting a none type error has no attribute group because what's going on here is that Batman dot uh, Batman. So let me fix this up. If match print match group else print 404 not found. Okay. So here Basically, what's going on is that when we do a search, it's returning a match object if it finds something. If it doesn't find a match, though, it's going to return what's called a null value, which in Python is none. Um, that is, which is, it's a special keyword. Basically, you can use it and you have access to it. You can say, hey, x is equal to none, and it will say it, this is a variable that holds nothing. So if it doesn't find anything, Match won't hold anything. And a none is always treat felt. Uh, and to go back to what I've told you about in Python weeks and weeks ago, you know, it's hard to remember back to prior to coronavirus, I know. But weeks and weeks ago, I mentioned that there's a truth that variables in Python have truthiness and falsiness, right? So anything that has a value 
like one or two or five or hello. That's truthy, and Python will treat it as true if it's if you throw it into an if statement. But if it's got like a zero value, like zero or none, then Python will treat it as false. So Python will so and that makes it convenient because you'll say if there's a match, print it. Otherwise, print out I didn't find it. So going back to this, it's gotta have at least one woe in it. So it will match that woman as well as that woman. Um, so over here, we can see that we get, um, so let's go ahead and, uh, let's look at, let's go ahead and make a Joker regex over here is our last example. You know what? Actually, I will halt it for right here. I think this is a good stopping point for today, uh, because I've hit you over the head with a lot of information. Um, so I've put up the latest assignment on, on Canvas. It will be one of our last assignments. Um, regular expressions generally comes at the end of the semester. Uh, when does, so let's, that's an excellent question. When will the third exam be? Regular is our last, that's a, also a very good uh, question. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, I don't even know how much time I have left. So uh, Temple, academic calendar. This is how I figure out all that stuff. Same as you, uh, 2019. Uh, no, there won't be any additional recordings. There's not really, I'm just gonna record here. It's, there's not that much more I have to teach you this semester. I, I did a pretty good job of, of hitting all the things I needed to hit. Um, priority registration. So what's Laser's favorite TV show? Varies from day to day. Um, Curious George is pretty good. He watched a bit of Steven Universe last night and he liked it. So what is class then? Class I'll do as I'll do as a recorded lecture. Class I'll do as a recorded lecture, and then I will um, and you know I'll upload it. It'll basically fluctuate between uh, recorded lectures and exercises. So, so like I will, I will lecture and I'll put that recording of the lecture up on YouTube, but the flipped classroom thing, I mean, look, and if you can't make it to the lecture, you can't make it to the lecture. It's okay. I understand. Um, let's see. Adventure time might be a bit too weird for a three-year-old. So March 27th. So it's the 7th. So, uh, we've got this week, next week, and this week. So... Last exam will probably be on the twin. That exam's probably that makeup extra exam will probably be right here, the twenty third. Then, last possible thing, and it will probably just go over regex. Um, you're kind of. So okay, so two different questions. Is the exam optional? Uh, yes because I'm going to do three exams and you're, and I'm going to take the highest of your three, uh, the two highest of your three scores. So you can totally skip it or you can just do it. Your final exam is going to be okay. Final exam is according to this PDF, uh, which I think, let's see. CIS, we don't have common finals. I'll give a practice for the final as best I can. Um, I try to do fi uh, practices. So we do... Ba -ba -bum. Let's see, final exam. So we meet at 2, but none of these are 2 o'clock, right? Because these aren't... Because we aren't a four-hour meeting. We're three hours plus a lab hour. So we look over here, Tuesday, Thursday. So... The final exam would be, so this would be exam three followed by the final exam. The exam three will be short. It will cover basically only regular expressions, whereas this exam will be cumulative. So again, this thing is optional. How will we take the final exam? All the rest of the exams are going to be exactly like exam two.
In the sense of format. And, like, basically, I'll just give you the exam, and you'll take it electronically. I still have office hours today at 4. Just give me a second to actually eat lunch. Mm. Take the highest of the two exam of the two midterms. So, mm. let me go ahead and pull up the syllabus for a second. If you have three other finals that day, then ask me. Then let me know, and I'll let you take it at a different time. Or ask one of the other, or, or ask to take one of the other exams at a different time. I have no idea how pass fail works for this class. I'm just going to give you a miracle. Uh, hopefully by the end of this week for the scores. So give me a second. Oof, that's a lot of questions. Well, regex is going to be a, a assignment, but the yeah, rest of the semester is normal. Here, I'm trying to make this as normal as possible. Anything that's due on Canvas. That's an excellent question. I was going to set the due date. Um, I have to look at what what people have turned in. Um, IDP. Syllabus. I will set uh, that up. Okay. Um, exams are... 35%. We'll probably do another exercise in class uh, tomorrow. I'm sorry. We'll probably do another like quiz in class exercise in class on regex tomorrow. Not tomorrow, but Thursday. Um, exams are 35%. So those are your three exams. And I'll just simply, what we'll do is that each is that we'll take the two highest exam scores. And then the final exam, it's its own thing, which is 30% of your grade. Exam three would be the 23rd. Sorry, the 27th? No, the 23rd. Exam three would be the 23rd. It will be exclusively over regular expressions, most likely. Um... Rather than doing a quiz to make up the points from exam one, this is, I think, exam three, dropping the the exam three, or drop dropping stuff and doing three exams and dropping the lowest seemed to be the the best amount, uh, best process for that. The final exam is on the 20, is on the 30th according to the document. Exam, all right. The last day is the 27th. The last day of classes is the 27th, but you then have two uh, study days followed by final exams. No, here. You'll probably get your grades this week. Um, exam, no, it's not on the 22nd, it's on the 23rd. 23rd, final. That's okay, neither can I. Finals cumulative. Yep, just show up onto Zoom. If you don't want to take it, just don't come to Zoom. Probably not. Probably, you probably won't get t points taken off. So, yes, exam two is going to, exam three will probably be short, uh, but I'm going to, but because I, by the because of the nature of regular expressions, I can write a lot more. I can write, I can make a good amount. Of the uh, I can I can probably make half a good amount of the exam multiple choice. 
When it comes to regular expressions, I'm a big fan of saying, this is a regex. Which of the strings do, uh, does the regex match? And then I'm also a fan of, given this string, which of the regexes will, uh, which of the regexes will match the str string? So I'll try to make it sh uh, fairly short, but a bit easier on the grading for me. All right. All right, so that's it. I'm no um it is 322. I really need to eat. I'm going to talk I'm going to see you during office hours at four o'clock.